We have some fast solar wind coming, and we have some big flare players on both the Earth side and the far side of the sun. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is really keeping us on our toes. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we are paying close attention to region 3738. This region over the past two days or so has really been growing quite a bit. It has become an expert player, but it looks like the growth is beginning to slow down just a little bit so we can back off worrying too much about R3 level radio blackouts. But radio uh, blackouts at the R1 to R2 level are definitely still on the menu. Meanwhile, as we continue watching this region rotate, rotate through the Earth strike zone. We're also paying close attention to do this coronal hole. This is going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next day or two, and it is going to be giving us some fast solar wind, giving us possibly some aurora at high latitudes, probably not going to last for all that long, and probably not going to give us much of a show at mid latitudes. So it's not going to be that big a deal. But meanwhile, we're really paying attention to the east limb. This is where we're seeing a lot of regions beginning to rotate into Earth view. In fact, back on the 10th we got a big M flare on the sun's far side as we take a look at the sticks light curves from solar orbiter we can actually see we had a big M 2.3 flare you can see it right here this was from a region that's actually going to be rotating into earth view here over the next couple days you can see it right here this region is likely a new region and we'll talk more about that in a minute when we take a look at what's happening on the sun's far side meanwhile we're going to need to be paying more attention to the other filaments that could be erupting here especially around region 37 38 because this region is still the dominant player on the sun's earth side and now switching to our full sun map, we should take a look at what's going on on the far side according to Solar Orbiter. We can see that the red right here, this is AIA imagery that's on the Earth side, and the blue is the EUI imagery from Solar Orbiter that's looking at the sun from the far side. And just as we talked about, we have some new regions that are emerging on the sun's disk. As you watch this thing, again, we put it into motion, you can see these regions emerging very slowly. And as we saw that big M-class flare on the sun's far side, we also had a big solar storm from this region, and we know that it's one of the two regions in here that is likely the source for that big M-class flare and that solar storm, and that is likely to be rotating into Earth here over the next couple days. So we could definitely see some big solar storms coming, as well as bigger solar flares. Now, switching to our moon, we are passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, and by the 18th, the moon will be about 90% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast solar wind from a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, no is expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 70% chance of a major storm at high latitudes right around the 14th. That'll be the peak of it, and then things will begin to calm down from there. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a show. Now, at mid-latitudes, well, we are still expecting active conditions, but they're not going to last as long with this fast solar wind. But we do expect a potential for about a 30% chance of a minor storm right around the 14th. So again, Aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, only if you're dedicated should you chase, but we could actually reach G1 levels with this uh, fast solar wind. But then things are going to calm down But after that, but we might have some chances for some solar storms starting around next week. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting with solar flux in the triple digits, and this is mainly due to region 3738, which is an active X flare player right now. In fact, it's keeping moderate noise on the radio bands on Earth's dayside. NOAA is giving us about a 60% chance of an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next few days, as well as about a 15% chance of X class flares over the next few days. Although things look like they're kind of tapering off so we might see a, a that 
chance dwindling a little bit over the next couple days. However, we do have some new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view, and this is going to keep that noise on the radio bands in the moderate range. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect that we're going to continue to have noise on the dayside radio bands over this next week as this region continues to rotate to the sun's west limb, and we get new regions rotating in, which have already shown that they are M player players on the sun's far side. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green when it comes to big radiation storms. We are sitting at the D1 normal range, and this is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 range for everybody else. It's kind of quiet out there right now. But we have seen some radiation storms on the sun's far side, just small ones right now. But we could have that risk rise. Right now, NOAA is giving us about a 15% chance of radiation storms storms, and this is mainly from region 37, 38, and that might climb as that region rotates to the west limb, but expect things to stay about where they are. So even for you frequent flyers and air crew, it looks like you're all in the green right now, but be sure to pay attention to those ICAO advisories because things could change awfully quickly. So the space weather this week is keeping us on our toes. We do have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a show from the fast solar wind that's coming. And even aurora photographers at mid latitudes, if you're dedicated, it might be worth a look because we could get some activity, especially around the 14th. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we do have region 3738 that is an X-flare player. It has been raising that noise on the radio bands on Earth's day side, but it hasn't really fired off any big uh, R3 level radio blackouts as of yet. So we're just dealing with a lot of noise on the bands and it's likely going to continue like that over the next few days until this region rotates uh, to the sun's far side. However, we do have some new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view and they've already shown that they could be big flare players because we've seen some big flares on the sun's far side. So likely the noise on the bands is going to stay in the moderate range and you're going to have to be dealing with these radio blackouts. So just kind of grin and bear it. And now you GPS users, well, we do have some fast solar wind coming, so that could give you some issues, some GPS uh, reception issues on Earth's night side. And we do have a bit of noise on the day side bands. So that means that GPS reception might be a little bit glitchy here over the next few days and especially near dawn and near dusk or anywhere near Aurora, always be sure to stay vigilant. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.